Hello everybody, and welcome back once again to Let's Play Crusader Kings 2 The House Fleming Dynasty. This is the fourth attempt now that I have had at starting this session. The reason why it's my fourth attempt is because I'm having some really bad issues with the frame rate of the recordings. Um, DX Story and Fraps both seem to be having some kind of an issue with this game for some reason today. I don't know if it, what it is. I do know that the, the longer the game goes on, obviously the more characters there are in the game, the larger the game is, the more that's going on, and that might be an issue. But uh, I've never experienced it up until now, so hopefully this is a technical glitch that will uh, will hopefully uh, not persist for too much longer. I've tried restarting my computer, I've also altered the resolution that I'm recording the game in now, so that might, fingers crossed, have solved the issue. Anyway, enough about my technical difficulties. If you're seeing this video on your screens, you know that I have solved it. Last time we left off, civil war in England. William II, the grandson of King William the Conqueror, the, the uh, late king who reigned for several years. His grandson came to power. Nobody, and I mean nobody, seemed to like him. His entire vassals, the entirety of his, of his vassalage, rose up against him and put this man on the throne, King Richard I due to a faction started, I believe, by Duchess Hermione. So he successfully usurped the title. Now, when the end of the at the end of the last session, I couldn't save the game because it crashed when I stopped the recording. So uh, the game ended on the 19th of September, 11.05, and it auto-saved on the 1st of July. So anything that happened between the 1st of July and the 19th of September is lost to the annals of history. We conquered Desmond. We can do that again. We gave it to our son. We can do that again. However, something that might not happen again, that was quite a pivotal piece of, the, uh, of history, was this man, who usurped the title, died on the 26th of August 1105 in the last game. That might not happen again. He might go on to live uh, to the age of 70 odd, getting a second chance at life to rule over the land that he uh, usurped. We'll have to wait and see. Time will tell. Now he is stressed at the moment, which is probably why he died last time. He's got a minus one health uh, penalty, and that's not going to stand him in good stead. So what we're going to do at a slower pace is we're just going to tick the, t tick the clock on until the 19th of September, which is when we uh, left off last time, and hopefully we'll see if history will repeat itself, or if King Richard will basically defeat the Grim Reaper <laughs> and dodge death. Now I'm just keeping my eye on the frame rate. It's dropping a little, but hopefully not too noticeable. Nope, it's dropping, it's dropping. Uh, I don't know how this will look in the recording, but uh, it's getting down to the lower levels again. Mm, this is bad. Yeah, this is bad. <sighs> this is very bad. Why is this happening? Because I believe because King Richard Flanders is part of the Holy Roman Empire in a de jure sense. He gets a vote in the elections for the next emperor, so that's why he's getting a vote in the Holy Roman Empire elections. Okay, the frame rate's jumped up again. We'll see. We'll keep going. We'll keep plodding along for now. We're just about to capture Desmond for the second time, and uh, my Ch Chancellor should be fabricating claims in Thomond. Hopefully trying to capture the duchy. If not, capturing the county will be enough because we will then hold two of the three duchies, uh, three, two of the three counties in this duchy and we'll have a de jour claim on the third. If we usurp the dukedom, of course. Now, uh, what is the... Ca it is de jour, it's the duchy of Munster. So uh, we'll see what happens. 
Just waiting for the city to fall, the city of Cork, and then we shall uh, once again press our claims. Favours himself to be the next Holy Roman Emperor in your dreams, buddy, springs to mind. I've got quite a, thing, a, quite a few things to discuss about the last session and about our future, but uh, I'm just waiting until we get to the 19th of September, which is when we last left off. Got a little bit of uh, money ticking over nice. We're getting 5.15 per month, which is a very healthy profit. Uh, so there we go. I'll just wait for the 19th of September. I don't know why 19th. I mean, we ended on the 19th, so we'll we'll start today's session proper on the same day, just for the sake of it. Right. Okay. So just like last time, we shall press our claims in Desmond here, enforce the demands. We shall then gift Desmond to our son Zachariah. There we go. When we shall. Um, disband our troops and that is where we left off last time of course as you just witnessed King Richard is still with us he didn't pop his clogs and he's still soldiering on will he die anytime soon or will he indeed live out his days until he's old and grey well have to wait and see. Speaking of old and grey, I just thought I'd check here. I did make a comment the last couple of updates ago regarding uh, what is the oldest person that you have seen in the game. Now we can actually search all realms and we can search all people by age to find out that the oldest person in the known world at this moment in time is 82. Ramon Berengar, courtier of uh, King Philippe the Great. He's not any relations to my Berengar, is he? No. No, no relations. So he's the oldest person in the game, 82. Not bad. Just a little bit of interesting trivia there for you all. So, uh, okay, we're working, the frame rate's not too bad, so we'll, we'll keep pressing on. Um, if you see the game stop and start, or any sort of jumps, it's because I'm restarting the recording program to try and refresh the frame rate. So, uh, before we press on with today's session proper then, just a couple of things I want to go through. And I'll keep the game paused for it. First of all, there's a Pagan DLC coming out very soon where you can play uh, Pagan... Uh, pagan religion people, <laughs> if that's not, obviously, not, obviously not the right term, but you know what I mean. Pagan factions or whatever, um, you can, you can uh, play those. A little bit of a change to the timeline as well, I believe, with that DLC. I won't be getting the DLC per se, but uh, with every DLC there is usually a patch released, which overhauls the game engine in preparation for the new uh, DLC, and those um, patches do alter the game, even if you don't have the DLC. You do sometimes get some of the new features that the, uh, that the patch offers, uh, a little bit of a change to the game mechanics here and there. So that's something to uh, bear in mind when uh, when it finally does come out. In the last session I uh, sent one of my children away, or one of the children of my courtiers away, to be tutored by Duke Robert of York in the hope that we would be able to increase relationship with him by doing so. I have been informed, as I found out to my behest of course, that uh, for that bonus to take effect in relationship the child has to be my child, so uh, that's something to bear in mind for future. Okay, dokie. And uh, now something more about the game itself in terms of our campaign. Now, uh, there was some mention about creating a faction to put Duchess Hermione on the throne. Well, we can't do that because the main reason being that uh, England is uh, agnatic primogeniture, which means females cannot inherit, so there was, we can't create a faction to put a female on the throne. So, we, so out of interest though, if we do go to factions, we can see what factions we can start, and nothing really of interest to George, he's content anyway, plus he's servant of the crown, he usually does uh, sort of favour the kings does their bidding, even if he doesn't like them, he shows them a level of respect due to their position as his liege and therefore he won't start any factions uh, generally, unless, unless of course something 
um, threatens his family, of course, as, we, as we've seen in the past. He will make a decision against the Crown if, and, and only if, his family is at risk. Uh, but we can start the usual factions here, changing the succession laws, gaining independence, or putting some random person on the throne who we don't care for. <clears throat> There's a few people. Prince Odo, of course, is the son of the late King William II, who is the heir to the Kingdom of England if Richard dies, and a few other people as well. So that's uh, the factions' situation. And what else? Something that somebody found out, which is actually quite pivotal. You click on Duchess Hermione here, and you see now where you see her. Yeah, you mouse over her name, and what do you see? Her spouse, her husband, of course, is Duke Ambrose of Normandy. No problem there. Her religious head is Pope v Vitalian II. No problem there. Oh, but what's that in between? Lover? King Richard the First of England. <laughs> she is having an affair with King Richard the First of England. It all makes sense. Why she was so hasty to try and put him on the flaming throne, the damn harlot. Now, obviously, Duke George has found out about this, courtesy of some of his more eagle-eyed uh, noblemen. But uh, what's he going to do? Is he going to order her to be executed for betraying his son? It doesn't quite seem like Duke George's style. So uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to leave our son to deal with it and, and he can deal with it as he sees fit if he wants to divorce her, execute her, do whatever he will. He's a, she's in a different court, he's in a different court, we'll just tell him about it and leave him to deal with it as he sees fit. But Duke George will be whispering in his son's ear, whatever you do, ensure that it does not threaten the future of our empire. There's a good boy. So that's a little piece of information which I thought to be rather interesting to say the very least. And what makes that more interesting in fact is if we go to the family tree of uh, this we can actually see that uh, the person that she's having an affair with is, is, <laughs> is, is not too distant a relation. Um, Duke William the Third of Normandy. She is some distant relation to this man. Maybe it's too far. Maybe it's too far removed. Someone was saying that that Prince Richard was her uncle, but I don't, don't think that is the case. I might be wrong. Ah, is that it here? No? I don't... Robert, I mean this family is just so humongous. William there, oh there she is, okay. <laughs> if you think I'm going to be able to wangle this somehow, you are sadly mistaken. Apparently... Where the hell are we? There we go. Brothers. Okay. Uh, Richard. All the way down here. Alright, so they are related. Very, very distant. Almost like cousins, I suppose. What is... yeah. <laughs> anyway. Make of that what you will. So time ticking away nice and steadily. Now... Over in the forums, conversation has been rife with our future. What we should do, who we should invade, what's gonna, what, what's our next step gonna be? Should we claim independence from England or should we remain under the crown? Should we move into Scotland once we've conquered Ireland? Should we go down and leave Ireland and go to Brittany and conquer Brittany on behalf of England? All of this sort of thing. 
and of course most of that will be determined by the traits of the characters and of course George is content, he's patient, he's uh, yes he's, con he's, 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 he's going to be expanding here in Ireland for the time being on behalf of his family to ensure that they have his children, his, his grandchildren have adequate lands in the future but after Ireland we'll have to wait and see what happens whilst we're conquering Ireland things could change drastically around the world which might dictate what we do and when we do it so we're not going to make any long-term plans just yet we are going to just try and focus on unifying Ireland because this will not be a quick mission this will be something that takes a long time and of course Duke George is no spring chicken as we saw with King Richard in the previous part he's now alive by some bloody miracle but uh, Duke George could drop dead at any minute he's 51 he's now in the twilight years of his life all we can hope is that he remains nice and healthy because it would be nice for him to live to see the unification of Ireland considering that he started this whole thing